Today's Hope Focus segment takes us to the topic of surrender. In a country of rampant individualism and a society built on self-reliance, the last notion of our heart is wholesale surrender. Yet the Word of God tells us the only way to truly save our life is to lose it. Bill Harris of Rapture Ministries is preparing a four-part series on this topic. I caught up with Bill to learn the importance of surrender and how exactly we go about losing our lives. Well, Bill, happy to be talking to you again. Of course, last time we had the opportunity to discuss a few of your upcoming shows. We're going to do that here again as you're preparing to start a, a, a four-part series coming up yes. uh, discussing the total surrender yes. to God and, and what that all entails. So we'll dive here into that in a minute. But I wanted to ask you first, surrender, especially wholesale surrender, why? Mm -hmm. uh, at first glance, it's not something that we really uh, is appealing towards us. Yeah. But what's the importance for us as Christians that whole total surrender to God? Well, first of all, Zach, God is talking to me. <laughs> and then as he talks to me, then he has me to share the message with others. But we can't realize our total potential. We can't realize all of what God has purposed for us in life if we don't surrender all. Mm. And when we're not surrendering, we're doing our own thing. It's either the body, soul, or spirit that's, take, that's taking off on its own agenda, and it takes us away from what God has already planned for us. So the total surrender brings us in total alignment with His will. And His will is filled with nothing but good things. Not to say that we don't have challenges in life. Yes, we will. Mm. But we're overcomers when we allow Him to supersede everything else. Okay, well, you break the... The whole total surrender into four different parts, uh, body, mm -hmm. spirit, soul, and then ultimately spiritual warfare. Yes. Let's talk about the first part, the body. Okay. And, I, and I've, seen, I've seen a little bit of how you break that down when you do discuss those three parts. The significance of the body. Let's talk about the that. The significance is, well, you know, you have, uh, you have the five senses, the hearing, seeing, tasting, touching, and smelling. This is what God has given us to help us to navigate throughout the natural world. Sometimes um, the body, because the body is not, uh, been redeemed. It is our spirit that has been redeemed. The body wants to continue to do its own thing. And so the Bible has a, a scripture where it talks about the flesh and the spirit conflicting against each other and, th and they're antagonistic to each other because the body wants drugs. The body wants illicit sex. The body wants to, to talk about gossip and all these other kinds of things. And the spirit is trying to get us to walk and live holy. So that's why we have to bring the body under God's domain so he can cause us to behave. <laughs> sure. And so how do we do that? How, when we're focusing on the body, those fleshly impulses, yeah. how do we battle against that? And that's what they are, fleshly impulses. And what God tells us to do in Romans chapter 12, verse 1, he says, present your bodies a living sacrifice, yes. you know, holy and acceptable unto God, and which is our reasonable service. Now, when we present our bodies as a living sacrifice, it means it's perpetual. When you look at the Old Testament and they used to sacrifice animals. Every now and then they would sacrifice animals for their sins and the like. Mm -hmm. Well, that, that animal worship system has been done away with. Now we are the temple of God. And now we need to mortify, which means kill, mortify our flesh. So we're lying ourselves on that altar. Yeah. And uh, we are committed to Christ and we are at the cross. Another scripture says we, we um, mortify the flesh by crucifying ourselves. The cross is an instrument of death. Mm. The altar is an instrument of death. Our body has to die out to the things of the world and its own cravings and desires. And to do that, we have to say no to it. And God helps us with that. Well, and I've heard you mention saying no to those impulses and something that we can't do on our own. No. And we certainly try to deny ourselves, but ultimately it takes a spiritual uh, it does. element to it. It does. And, and, and let me say this to encourage our audience that when, because we're frail human beings, we have times where we fail. But the blood of Jesus is there to deal with whatever you've done. Some people have not forgiven themselves for yes. sins they've committed for years ago. You haven't committed yourself, but Christ forgave you over 2,000 <laughs> years ago. There is enough power in the blood of Jesus to deal with whatever you did that was a sin, mistake, or whatever you want to call it. Really okay, is. and that, let's say if you're sitting at home, that, that all sounds great. You certainly want that, and that's something... Um, that you know needs to happen. But what are some practical elements that can help us to deny the body? Very the good, good question. I think for one thing, if you know that there is a certain sin that bothers you a lot, you have to stay away from that. Because if you kind of ease up to that just to see how far you can yes, go, yeah. you're opening the door for Satan to come in and take you to the next level. 
So we have to be honest and open about ourselves. You know, I've heard, I've, I've talked to Christians who used to gamble. I, I have a brother-in-law who used to, he never saw a lottery ticket he didn't like. I mean, mm -hmm. he always believed yes. that he could win, you know? Right. And so what he does now, he doesn't go. He doesn't go to the store where they have the lotteries and like, he doesn't go to gambling casinos and things because he knows that that was the thing that God had delivered him from. Yes. You know, same thing with a person that does drinking and the like. You don't want to sit there in a bar if you know you were an alcoholic and you're trying to, right. you know, rid yourself of that. It's, it, it can be very common, and very practical. Yeah, so placing yourself in the environment can set you up for failure. Yes, it can. You, you yes, want to avoid. Can. Okay, well, the first part was the body that we're discussing. There's a second part to it as well in this, in this four part series. Let's talk a little bit about that. Okay. The second part is about the soul. And just like I described uh, the, the five parts of the, of the body being the, uh, the five senses, in the soul you have the mind, the will, and the um, emotions. Mind, will, and emotions. And you could umbrella it by calling it like the, the intellect of man. And we see situations in society today where, let's take the mind for instance. The Bible says that the, the, the fool has already said in his heart there is no God. There is this thinking, there's this mindset in the world that there is no God or that we are gods or that the, uh, the environment or the universe is God. And so there's a lot going on to deny God, deny his existence or mm -hmm. to say he's dead or whatever. And then when you look at the will, God wants to redirect our will because we are free agents. We have a right to do what we want to do. But God wants to redirect our will, but he won't do it unless you agree to it. Yes. And so when we come to him, that total, a part of that total surrender is giving him the mind, giving him the will. And then the emotions, we know what happens when our emotions are outside of God's control. We can become irrational. We can say or do things we don't mean to say. Mm -hmm. God wants to be in control of our emotions. I, I, I tell people very often that God wants the major aspects of your life. He wants the minor aspects of your life. And he wants the minutia. He mm -hmm. wants it all. It yes. was total surrender. Well, you've heard just a little bit of how we go about total surrender to God, beginning with the body and soul. If you would like to hear more from Bill, tune in to Update with Bill Harris this Sunday at 1.30 or Wednesday mornings at 9. Now let's take a look at some of the upcoming events in the region 